Well, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Trumpeter's Call, where the saints of God are evolving into this wonderful, incredible, matchless bride. She is the Lord's wife. She's the emerging bride, I like to say. And uh, I've taught that so much, I need to go back and capture every note that I've said about the emerging bride and just put it in a book. Ain't that right, Dr. Oliver Reed? So uh, listen, I'm glad that you're here this morning and uh, tag somebody inside of the chat, call somebody. We just started a new series, um, The Spirit of Courage, The Spirit of Courage. And I am doing my best uh, to try and um, contain from preaching and being incredibly excited so excited that I don't lay a good foundation. Now, listen, for all of you that are on the Trumpeter's Call that have been here faithfully, you know that um, when we take a theme, we run that theme as long as the Lord says fit. Our last theme was led by the Spirit, and um, and we talked about being led by the Spirit from so many different aspects with so many wonderful teachers. Good morning, Charlotte Walker from was that Albuquerque, Mexico. New Mexico, blessings, blessings. That's one of our daughters from Judah International, moved away. Love you very much. Kiss the family. Um, so anyway, when we take, when we're dealing on the trumpeter's call, of course, we, we take a theme uh, and it just baffles me sometimes how I'm hearing something, trying to connect it. Very appreciative of my king for learning how to wait and not just release everything at one moment. So I've been dealing with this, this topic, the spirit of courage, for probably about uh, a month and a half. I shared it with somebody, and then I just kind of played with it. Uh, and it all came out of courage to forgive, courage to forgive others, courage to forgive yourself. And I was like, whoa. Uh, but at first, I just heard the word forgiveness. I'm like, how am I going to do a month teaching on forgiveness on the trumpeter's call? Well, I didn't have all the pieces. The Bible said we prophesy in part. We know in part, we see in part. And so you got to make sure you got all the parts that the Lord wants you to have before you release something out, whether it's a business plan, a blueprint, an idea. And so we really was working diligent to, I was really working diligent on how to, but as we continued within, led by the spirit, it became even more clear to me um, that the Holy Spirit was leading us all into some spaces uh, that are not always easy and some spaces that he wants us to look at ourselves he wants us to look at others around us, but more importantly, he wants us to have our eyes on him because he knows. Good morning, Minister Ann Paxton, Gene Logan. God bless you. Faithful to the, the Trumpeter's Call years and years and years. And so also the other thing that we do on the Trumpeter's Call, for those of you gatekeepers, uh, prayer line of Mississippi, uh, we like to take that theme, of course. Uh, I then give scriptures. Uh, scriptures that I'm going to give today will be uh, Psalms 27, <clears throat> 14. Psalms 27, let me get to these, there we go, I'll make sure I quote them right, Psalms 27, 13 and 14, I'll go over that again, um, also Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 through 7, 8, Deuteronomy chapter 31, Deuteronomy 31, And 23, Deuteronomy 31, 23, all right? Um, also, we're going to deal a little bit around uh, uh, Luke 4 and 18 in just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we're going to deal with that. <clears throat> there will be some others uh, that I have and will release to you as I am laying to you. Glad you made it back home safe. And so what you'll, what you'll see uh, for those of you that are starting prayer lines, those of you leaders that want to uh, either start a prayer line or already have something going, we, we try to structure everything to the best of our ability where we are utilizing every gift. We're using the administrations, uh, administrators, facilitators, where we're using the prophetic voice of those people who have the spirit of prophecy, who operate in the office of the prophecy, who may have the gift of prophecy, just gave you three different things. Um, we also give opportunity for people to intercede uh, verbally uh, in ways that we can understand words, uh, language that we all speak. And then, of course, um, we talk in our holy language. Right. You said and that and there's always a time for 
God bless you, Pastor. Pastor Barlow, give love to the wife. Enjoy talking with you uh, yesterday. I need you guys to keep your eye on that name right there. That's Yeshua Breakthrough Ministries there in Jackson. Some good things unfolding there uh, uh, with Pastor James and, and Sylvia Barlow. Good people. Uh, I see you, Brandy Young, all the way from Ohio. Uh, we're going to have to get you back in on StreamYard. Uh, if you're not moving, I know you're an hour ahead of us. Uh, and so we're we're all about training. And our wonderful songbird right there, uh, Minister Montina McLean, uh, love you so much for your faithfulness. And I talked to Ilya the other day. I got some coming on the docket with your name on it. So get ready. Uh, the other thing, I see your brother Jerry Bird. That's elder in our church, faithful to the work of God. And uh, we appreciate it. So I'd like to jump in and give that, but on the trumpeter's call, there is a systematic approach. That's my cousin Gregory Murphy of the late pastor Shirley Murphy. He is also a worship leader. He is also a worship leader that I need to get with you, Jerry, and uh, Minister Montina. When we go to Rockford, we're going to pull on Gregory Murphy uh, because he led worship at Highway to Heaven uh, for a long time, and, and his dad needs him. Pastor Gaston Murphy needs him to lead worship again. So we can usher in the spirit of God and bring more people to the altar. Uh, so listen, pay attention to everything that we're doing uh, because there's a reason and why we're doing it. Um, I didn't really understand all that when we first started pioneering over 13 years ago. I just know that I wanted to include everybody to the best of my ability, which comes from helping people understand their metron, their measure of faith. And uh, and so with that, uh, we've, we've developed a pretty good system. I didn't really know how good it was until uh, Elder Neal had me join the John Maxwell group, and uh, I got on the, the mentorship call, and the more I listened to the mentorship call, the more I recognized that what they were doing is what I've been doing uh, and what we've been doing. Somebody would teach, then somebody would have time to ask questions. That happens on the trumpeter's call. Um, they had skilled people in different areas of training, whether it's business or speaking or or uh, leadership games or how to go in a room and discern is what we would call it. They call it scoping out. And so what I recognize is that God will, Doug Williams, lead you uh, in a place that's not really plain path, but he'll be carving out a path. Uh, and that's not to take away from anything that anybody else is doing. Uh, it just sometimes gives me a greater value for things that we don't put as much value on. So uh, there's a reason why you're being asked to be an administrator or a facilitator or setting the schedule or working on StreamYard behind the scene, blowing the shofar, which we need more individuals to do other than Brian and myself. Uh, so listen, uh, if you're available, a matter of fact, I'm not even asking you if you're available. If you're called, you contact us. If you're called, you contact us. If you're available and you really don't want to do it, don't call us because we don't have time to chase you and we don't have time to be mad that you don't show up and do what we're asking because this is an opportunity. Uh, and I want to present it just like that for those of you. Uh, for those of you running prayer calls, I know you have one man of God. Uh, so listen, including as many people as possible, allowing them to move in their skill sets uh, is really important. And helping develop those skill sets as we go along is vitally important. I see the water walking warrior in the background. Brother Brian, will you blow that show far for me? If you would, we're going to click over to him and then we're going to move right along. He's not ready yet? Okay. Don't worry about it. I'll come back when you're ready. Doug Williams, you let me know. That's a childhood friend from Loomis Street. Let me know when you want to come online and pray. We're doing two or three things here. We're on stream, yes, but we also are on the phone line. A couple of quick announcements. I'm going to move into this word. Listen, no, uh, September the 19th, 17th, September the 17th, we are having leadership. Not, oh, my God. Excuse me. We're having... Spectrum Entertainment, all right? Spectrum Entertainment, that is something we created over five years ago. Right now, uh, I'm telling you, it is amazing. We're having spoken word artists. We got a live band. My daughter, Hannah Newble, is going to be singing. She has been working hard in the studio. Go to her YouTube page, like it, subscribe to it. Listen, we're going to be bringing EJ and Nate. That EJ is my son. That's my junior. And Nate is gonna uh, is a saxophone player, beautiful young man out of Madison, Wisconsin. They've got a band, incredible. We're gonna bring some of our very own. Minister Montina, she'll come along with us. That's one of the reasons why I was talking to Todd Delaney's road manager. We've got some things that we wanna build with Spectrum Entertainment. We've got Jalen Flagg. 
He is a phenom in Jackson, Tennessee, a young guy who has incredible knowledge of music. He's a producer. CJ, listen, he is a bass player. We've got the wonderful Vonda Pete. God bless you, Evangelist Sheila. Uh, EJ Shelton. Oh, my God. Clinton Smith and some wonderful people. Uh, Ebony Carter. Our very own Marcus Hendricks is going to be hosting. Uh, I'm going to jump in every once in a while because I want to get my feet wet. Uh, this is a mobile ministry, so it won't just happen in Jackson. It's going to happen in Bloomington. It's going to happen. Notice how I said that. It's going to happen in Bloomington. It's going to happen in Peoria. It's going to happen in Rockford. And we're going to have it's going to happen in Mississippi. We're going to take this around. We've got some wonderful people. Our daughter, Stephanie, uh, Stephanie Wilburn is going to bring sexes by Stephanie Fashion Show to the north. That's going to be incredible. We're kicking it off. Listen, you want to stay in tune because uh, we're moving along with the spirit of God as he's living. The Bible the Bible and God told me, if you will gather the people, give them instructions, teach, teach, produce connectivity, allow people to make connections, networking, like-mindedness. You sing, I sing. You do business, I do business. You love the worship, I love the worship. And then execute the instruction or the teaching. God says that he would gather from all parts of the earth. So I'm looking for people to show up at Spectrum Entertainment that's never showed up before in a, in a full service. Listen, I want you to send something. Good morning, Pastor Renee Hawthorne. Happy anniversary. We'll be with her right there. My God, Flame of Fire Ministries in Cincinnati, Ohio. Bishop and I will leave out tomorrow, matter of fact, to be with the wonderful man and woman of God. We're excited about that. It's going to be a good time. All right. Listen, I'm, I'm giving out a lot of shouts and my time is running. The other thing I want you to, to know that teacher Rebecca and I will be ministering uh, for four weeks. Uh, we've been talking about this. I've been pushed and nudged, and we're ready now uh, to, to launch out into Everybody Communicates, Few Connect. That is a John Maxwell training. It's a book of his. Um, of course, it's, all of his books are bestsellers. And we're going to talk about why it's important that the body of Christ in this time knows how to connect with the world. Uh, that's Spectrum Entertainment. That's a way of connecting with the world. Um, that everyone communicates, few connect, connecting with the world. This last conference we had, Vision Casters, was about connecting different parts with the world. Why? Because we are designed to touch all seven mountains by the Spirit of God with the insight and the wisdom of the Holy Ghost, not just our own psyche. I see you, Tiffany. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Listen, Jennifer, I see you this morning. <laughs> Listen, could you put up? Also, we are still selling uh, all of the trainings that took place with Vision Casters Leadership Spectrum. Uh, they're $25. There'll be a blessing. I'm telling you, one, there's the wonderful executive coach, Tina Grimes. She's a prophet in her own right. We bless her. Tina, we need you to come and talk to us on the trumpeter's call one morning. Will you do it? I know I just put you on the spot, so type it in there. Type it in there. Yes, Apostle, I will do it. We need you to come and talk to us through the Spirit of God. Uh, Tina's a fine, wonderful person in the kingdom that God connected to us and connected her to us and her family. We're glad about that. All right, listen. Uh, the spirit of courage. The spirit of courage. This right here to me is uh, I'm ready. And that's all I want to tell you is I'm ready. That's why I'm fumbling with my words because I want to get to Tina says, absolutely, you know it, and I will do it. We're going to put you on the docket. Why? Because she's got some amazing uh, amazing experiences that all resemble the spirit of courage. Teacher Rebecca's in the studio with me this morning. Snap, snap. The wonderful Elder Neil Maxamba's in the studio this morning. Snap, snap. Uh, the other day I was by myself, and I was making it do what it do. So if that video looked bad, that's because I'm still learning. But I'm going to learn after crashing a couple of times, you know that. Right? <laughs> all right, Spirit of the Living God, we thank you so. We're so honored by you. We do all things in decent and in order. We pray, Father, that our time in being skillful with the people of God today can bring insight and enlightenment to their lives. Father, we pray right now that your divine grace would bring them into such a space of anointing. Holy Ghost. 
We pray now for the spirit of courage, not to be something that we can do, but something that we receive by the power of the Holy Spirit and through the, the nature and the, the nature of Jesus Christ. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn for many brothers of from the dead. He is that in everything that we can imagine. Everything flows through Jesus Christ and everything flows through the power of the regenerated work of the Holy Ghost. We submit ourselves to it. We yield in every aspect of our lives that we might move under the grace that you've placed in us. We are humbled that you would even want to live in sinful flesh, but we're great. We're grateful and have great gratitude that you do it so very well. You cover us in ways that nobody ever could. God, you release us in ways nobody ever could understand, and we're appreciative of that, and we love you so. Amen. Brother Brian, whenever you're ready, are you ready? I need to hear that shofar before I jump off. The spirit of, of courage. The spirit of courage. Courage to. Courage to what? Courage to win. Courage to win. Rebecca Baum used to say all the time, somebody has to lose. And I hated that phrase. But of course, she knew more than me. She's right. Lord, give us the courage at times to lose because you will win. But there will be times that you will lose. Thank you for that lesson, Marge Edwards from the heavens. I love you for it. Blow it. Yes, sir. Oh! Hallelujah! Oh! Glory! Woo! Ain't nothing like it. My, my, my. I love that man. Brother Brian, I thank you for your faithfulness. Listen, so let's just talk a little bit about this spirit of courage. And I went back um, in my notes to just make sure that I was extremely clear. Uh, we started in Psalms 27, 13. I'm not going to rehearse all of this, but I'm going to just rehearse. David said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14, it says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. This be of good courage appears to be a choice, okay? It appears to be a choice of be of good courage. But the more you study, for those of you scholars that are going to be teaching coming soon, listen, you need to understand that being of good courage, there's only a part of it that you can do because man is a tripart being. Man lives in a soul. I mean, he lives in a body physically. He possesses a soul intellectually, and he operates at a spiritual being. So when I got to looking at this, this be of good courage, I had to do a greater stu a study in what courage really means. And so there are six dimensions of the word courage. I want you to hear me. Six as in the number of man. Right. So when it says be of good courage, there is a choice that you have. But in the choice, with your choice, then comes the activation of the power of the Holy Spirit in faith. I'm going to say that one more time. With the choice to be of good courage, then there is this activation of the power of God or of the Holy Spirit in faith. So if you don't determine to be of good courage in your emotion in your physical body taking a step in your emotions I, i'm going to be well with this then what happens is you will not activate the greater part of what courage is all about and that's the spirit of god or the spirit of courage that courage that resides in the work of the holy ghost if you follow me you see how i'm laying this out i'm trying to make sure you don't put yourself on a trail of walking and saying i'm going to be courageous I'm going to have courage. Those are great statements, but you need to understand that there is great struggle in having courage. Listen, the late Nelson Mandela said this. He said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but triumph over it. The brave man is not afraid, but he who conquers that fear. I'm going to read it for you again. Dr. Mandela declared, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, 
but he who conquers that fear, Nelson Mandela. The reason that I think that it's vitally important for us to understand this whole understanding of the spirit of courage in the context of God and not just you accomplishing great feats is because if you go to do something and you only have enough strength to do some of it and you get in the middle of the vision and then for some reason you feel like you cannot complete the vision. Are you listening to me? Tammy Love, there is something that God wants us to start, but then there's something that God says, I'm going to be with you to finish Elder Lafayette Young. It's vitally important because courage to, courage to what? Courage to weather through difficult communications. Anybody that's been married for any amount of time understand that everything that goes on inside of a marriage, you don't talk about online. Listen, most of the time we're afraid to talk about it in the pulpit when that's when it should be talked about because we can really save some headaches and we really can help some individuals develop themselves better before they tie the knot with somebody else that's in the process of tying, you know, in the process of making themselves better. Because marriage is two imperfect people coming together in an imperfect state, striving for maturity with each other. And guess what? Ooh, it's a lot of work. Say amen, teacher Rebecca. A lot, lot of work. She can tell you firsthand. It ain't always pleasant to live with the preacher. He's probably more something, something, something than he is the blessing that you think he is. <laughs> anyway, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalms 31, 23 says, O Lord, O love the Lord, excuse me, all ye saints. For the Lord preserves the faithful, the plentiful, re rewarded the proud doer. Are you ready to read for me? Be of good courage. There you go. He shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. I don't know very many verses in the 15 verses that you will find courage from the Old Testament to the New Testament that you will find a scripture that does not have to do with a part that you do, a part that God does, but also God strengthening your heart. He shall strengthen your heart. You see it right there in Psalms 27, 13, 14. He shall strengthen thine heart. Then 31, Psalms 31 and uh, 24. He shall strengthen your heart. Why is it important to have our heart strengthened as we're opening ourselves up we're striving for the spirit of courage because if your heart fails you, you will not have courage to conquer or do anything. I'll give you an example. I was in the state championship of, <laughs> it's a hard one right here, state championship. All four years I ran track, all four years I went to the state championship in the 400 meter dash. Never even knew that that was a race until he threw me in there. One of the best in the state of Illinois. Grooming, growing, did very well every single year. Got to my senior year. Listen, senior year, I'm on the line with some of the best. Mario Vesey from, from Rock Island. Listen to me. And my times were better than Mario's, but Mario was experienced in running in the championship races. Eric Newble was not. There are some situations that God's going to put you in that you don't have a frame of reference of how to be successful in. And it will make you question every bit of work and effort that you have done. Somebody telling you no when you've never heard no before. You've worked like crazy at something. I mean, you put the time, the energy, you sacrifice everything you can imagine. And then you got to the door and they said, not yet. You're not ready. And, and see, that right there hits the heart. It hits that area of our emotions that all of us would say we got in control, but we really don't have in control. I'm going to just tell you right now. Because if you had your heart in control, then God wouldn't use natural circumstances in the earth to bring you into divine alignment of how to operate spiritually. I just said a mouthful uses the things of our heart. When he wants to humble Eric, all he has to do is touch Hannah. All he has to do is allow EJ to struggle. All he has to do is allow Rebecca to hit a tough spot. 
What am I saying? You, if you got children, you understand. If you're married, you understand. If if you listen, if you're single and you got children, you understand. If you got a loved one in your life, listen, you've been dating that man. But listen to me, you've been dating that man for 15 years. 15 years you've been dating this guy and you're still wondering why he won't marry you. See, that right there, that has your heart. Somebody would say, girl, I would stay with him if he, if it was 15 years. Well, you stay with the man that you with for 15 years and he ain't been as good as the one that ain't married. Listen, what am I saying? I'm not trying to offend. I'm trying to let you know that whatever your heart is connected to, the power of the Holy Spirit begins to use those things. That's what a parable is all about. God uses natural things to reveal to us spiritual truth. So he uses things that are dear to our heart. You put time in. You put energy in. You put love in. You put money in. You put expectation. Watch me. You put attention, uh, attentionality in. You put all of these things in too, and then only to find out that uh, it didn't go through. A hope deferred making the heart sick. Do you know my heart, I had trained the best I had ever trained in my life, two days on my own, then with the coach, and got to that line and could not see myself running the race, not finishing the race, running the race, and I intentionally jumped the gun. And it has been a failure, listen to me, and it has been a failure in my life from the time of 17 years old up until now that I remember the fact that you don't let circumstances and situations and things happen in your life that take root, that make you say, I can't do this. You have to overcome. So some of you need some courage to overcome some stuff that you failed because you're getting right at the, the right at the line to start the next space, sphere, growth, level, realm, teaching, understanding, new job, new relationships, new city, regional transitional moments. Listen, you are right there only to find out, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. And you may be well equipped. Somebody should shout amen right there, Pastor Asina. Somebody shout right there. Somebody put it in caps. Amen. Amen. This word courage means nothing without this word be strong. Joshua chapter 1 5. Come on, go with me real quick. Joshua 1 5. Matter of fact, start at 1 and 1, and we'll read down, read 1 and 5 first. Then we're going to go back up. Now, as for the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that's Joshua 1 and 1 right there. It came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead, and now therefore arise. Moses. My servant is dead. So he's dealing with grief of a dead father. He is at the pinnacle. He has been trained all of his life as a military strategist. You hear me? He is trained all of his life as a military strategist. And now it's time for him to step into this new anointing, this new position, this new space that's all brand new to him. He watched Moses do it, but guess what? He's never done it before. He watched Moses be the set man, but Joshua had never been a set man before. So guess what? And everything that he ever believed in died. That's somebody in this room. That's somebody on this line. I'm, I'm talking room prophetically. I know for these two individuals, I remember when, when Gina Rosa Maxambo passed away. That's, that's Elder Neal's mom. She was dear to our heart. You hear me? I don't say that to bring a, a feeling out of it. I say that because I talk about her all the time. She's proud from heaven watching. I remember that time. That was tough. I remember Roy and Marge Edwards. You understand? I remember Leander Nubo for myself and different ones. But let me tell you something. Right at these critical moments, it seems like we would everything would be wonderful. Why could Moses stay alive and Joshua at least give Joshua a pat on the button? excuse me, the rear end or the back and say, son, take him into the Canaan land. I can't go. No, at this time, guess what? He was gone. So he's dealing with a huge spirit of grief, taking this next place in God. I know that it's a difficult place. That's when you hear people say, if you got to go alone, go alone. I believe that. But listen to me. He wasn't going alone. He was going with God and he was going with over 6 million people and then some that have been entrusted into him. So let's go, let's tell them, 
God's got some people that's going to go with you. There's a, there's a divisiveness happening in the kingdom of God. We all want to get our portion and not get everybody else their portion as well. So Joshua had a great feat. Go, babe. Verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee no all man. the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. <clears throat> I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. Wow. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Yes. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Lord have mercy. Which Moses my servant Shh. commanded thee turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. If you would go back to Psalms 27, you would see that there's a portion of verse in there that says, don't look to the right, don't look to the left, but look until. Listen, I put that in there specifically because I wanted you to see, for those you Bible scholars, you'll see that he's being instructed, don't look to the right, don't look to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest, because he is second guessing. He is in a place where he's second guessing if he can be strong and very courageous. You got it? But watch what I want to show you in this. This word strong, this word strong, it means to strengthen. It means to be strong. It means to prevail. It means to harden. So watch this. We're constantly saying, Lord, keep our hearts soft. But God puts us through situations where our hearts have to be hardened so we don't look to the right and be discouraged or look to the left and be discouraged or look, or look in front of us and be discouraged. Come on, all of us have compared ourselves to somebody at one place or another. That's why David said, my foot had nigh slipped at watching the prosperity of the wicked. Listen, I had almost fainted. You know why? David was looking at a temporary situation of the wicked. The wicked only prospers for a season. See, you're getting all messed up in your mind because you're watching the wicked people of the earth prosper for a season, and that's only a temporary blessing. But God says, listen, the righteous are as bold as a lion. Our inheritance is forever. It is eternal. But you're watching people who don't, don't know God, don't love God, don't talk about God. Matter of fact, they hate God, and they look like they're doing better than you. Oh, but my God, in this year of 5783, the year of justifiable recompense. Well, the Holy Ghost, God Himself, is going to recompense. He is going to re. He is going to uh, recognize the church. He is going to reinstitute the church. He is going to justify every wrong situation that ever happened. But it ain't gonna be like you think. He is gonna draw me into a place of understanding. This word means to be firm. Joshua, be firm. Don't it sound like that's Moses talking to him? But that's God. Moses, be firm. Grow in firmness. Be resolute. I know I'm no longer here. If Moses could talk to Joshua from the heaven, he said, I know I'm no longer telling you to wait at the base of the mountain. I know I'm no longer telling you to get, get her, and I'm going to set myself up on this rock, and you hold my right hand, and her going to hold my left hand. And all of, are you listen to me. Listen, Joshua, I want you to go fight the battle, but I don't want you to try to do it in your own strength. This word means to be stout. I got scared of that because we already got enough stubborn people in the world. I'm telling you, wow. It means to be stout, but not in the, the negative tense. It means to grow rigid. Joshua was young and tender. He had never walked this way before, and God wanted to give him some experience. And the only way that you can give people, leaders, listen to me, the only way that you can give experience to those that are underneath you or those that serve with you or those that serve beside you, guess what? Is to put them in a space and give them the opportunity to do it. Let them see. Because when, when they're not that close, they're saying, I can do this better. I know how to do that. I can do that. But it's only being under the pressure of having a dead father. It's only being under the pressure of not having all of the right tools and the right hands around you do you show what you're made of? You've got to give your sons and daughters, your business partners, your business leaders, your employees, your clients, the opportunity to put their hands on it and then fail. Put their hands on it and succeed. Put their hands on it and learn how 
to be a strength and a support. So Joshua, be strong. Now let me get to this word courageous. Are y'all ready? Or courage. You're going to like this. Chavez. It literally means to be alert. It means to be brave. Now watch, watch the overlay of the word strong and courage. It means to be stout. It also means to be bold. Lord, when you give me a spirit of courage, then I have boldness to stand before my adversary. I have boldness to stand and look myself in the face and say, I have the courage to defeat this. Are you hearing me? It's not easy to look yourself in the mirror and look at situations that you need to work. And I'm not talking about from some morbid way. Everything's wrong with me. I'm an ugly person. I'm this. No, 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 no. That's what I want to talk about. But to look at yourself and say, I need to improve in this communication. Everybody communicates, few connect. I need to, I need to do better in how I'm going to have emotional intelligence. Follow me. It means to be strong, to strengthen. To be secure, it means to harden. Wait a minute. Wasn't that one of the definitions of the word be strong? It means to harden. Harden your heart, really? Like have a hard heart? No, 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 no. You got to look at it a little closer. Having a hard heart means you're not turning to the right to be persuaded. You're not turning to the left. Let me, Because I'm a leader in the church, let me say this really, really honest. Many of you can go to YouTube and click on any preacher you want to hear. And they can, they can bless your socks off way better than maybe your pastor or somebody that's serving, but they don't know you. They don't know you. They're preaching to whomever they're preaching to, and that word might be for you, but they don't get that time or the, they don't get the opportunity, Sister Tammy, to put their hands in the dirt. I mean, put their hands in the clay, Jeremiah chapter 18, and form you. See, I never give more appreciation to individuals that have not worked with the, the clay, the mold, the mud that Eric Newbell is. Why? Because the Bible says, give them double honor. What are you saying? Are you saying that because you want double honor? No, I'm saying that because many of us are running very hard after what we can hear. The body of Christ, I'm telling you, that's why our churches, our local churches are not full. It ain't because everything's wrong in them. It's because you can get a smorgasbord of what you feel like whenever you want to get it. But here's the problem. Joshua stayed in the position with Moses as long as Moses was alive so he could develop that, that strong and that courage. And God then would take it and move it a little bit further. Now, I'm going to get a little historical with you in just a moment. Here's another definition of this word. It means to be determined. To be determined. We got a young man by the name of Ethan Bagley. No, excuse me. Ethan Daniel. Excuse me for that. Ethan Daniel Maxamble. He was at my house the other day, and he was determined. I said, Ethan, don't do that. Papa going to get you. And he was determined he was going to do it. He did it. And guess what? Papa got him. See, how do you deal with determined people? You give them the opportunity to make the choice, be courageous. And then you give them the opportunity to receive the reward of their courageousness. <laughs> did you hear me? Thank you for laughing at that, Rebecca. I thought it was funny myself. To make oneself alert. It means confirm oneself. Listen to this. To make oneself alert, to confirm oneself. It means to be uh, persistent and to prove superior. The only way Joshua was going to allow, be seen by the people as not only the leader that Moses anointed, not only the leader that God said was going to lead as a successor, but he had to go through the process. There are some situations right now for some of you leaders, wherever you are. I'm not just talking senior pastors. I'm talking about you worship leader. I'm talking about you ushers. I'm talking about, uh, listen, I'm talking about you business, but you're a supervisor now, but you're looking to be a boss. Listen, there are some things that you're going through right now that are, that are become proof. They're becoming proof to the people that you're serving if you are capable of leading them. Because I can give you the title, but that don't mean that I trust your leadership. I can give you the title. That doesn't mean that I trust your heart towards the whole. And a lot of times when you're a leader, you're going to lose out most of the time because you're going to do well for the people. And that's something we need to get back to. Laying our life down. No greater love, my God, than a, than a man would lay down his life for a friend. That is the life of Jesus Christ. Are y'all ready? Here we go. A little history historical view from the man Joshua. His name means Joshua 
or Jehovah salvation. Look, comparison. And his father, his father, Moses, his name means to be drawn out. Are you listening to me? Joshua's name went just uh, Jehovah of salvation. Jehovah is the God of salvation. Testament is an Old Testament type and shadow of Jesus Christ because he was given a task to lead the people in, but then he was given a task to divide the land. Jesus Christ was given the task to introduce himself or introduce us to the Father, but also to show us our inheritance in our fivefold ministry gifts, in the fruits of the Spirit, in the gifts of the Spirit, but more than anything, in the redemptive work that Christ works on the inside. Do y'all see how, listen, do, do you see how I'm staying right here within the vein, not of the mountain of religion, but in the mountain of your base? you got to know your base. You got to know that everything that comes out of your base resides in Christ and everything in Christ resides in God and everything that flows through you flows through the power of the Holy Spirit. Why does that work? Because then you'll understand that the work that's being done in you is the work that's being done by Jesus Christ and not just the works of our hand. Joshua, his name means Jehovah is salvation. Jesus brought salvation. The Bible talks about in Acts chapter, uh, I think it's chapter three, it, it begins to say, say this, it says, and Jesus came to the earth to reveal, to show man their sin. Man wouldn't have known their sin had not Jesus been given that man would know sin. Now you said, well, yeah, John the Baptist was preaching you vipers and repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. But Jesus was the express image of the one to show man sin, but also to give man salvation. So he gave man the opportunity. How do we become saved? How do we get into the kingdom? How do we get into our promised land? Are you listening to me? Joshua brought him into the promised land. So this courage is about understanding your placement, your base, but also the new position that you're called. His father names mean to be drawn out. His mother, Jochebed, she brought him out of the Nile. Listen, put him in the Nile and then Pharaoh's daughter poured him out. Moses means to be drawn out, to sanctify. Believer, hear me. God's drawing us out, but he's also sending us in. This is your time to be sent into the marketplace. It's your time to be sent into schools. It's your time to be sent in the places that you've never been before. I heard Prophet Jackie say the other day, God's about to sit us at tables we've never sat at. Well, I hope that you have learned the etiquette, the etiquette of that table, the art of listening, the art of listening, speaking when you should speak, the art of valuing the counsel of other people that are at the table, and the art just to have the opportunity to be at the table, the gratefulness of that. That comes out of the table of opportunity, and that was free. Joshua also is of the son of the tribe of Ephraim. Ephraim, you know Ephraim. Ephraim is Joseph's, this is Genesis chapter 41, 23. Ephraim is Joseph's second son. Manasseh was his first son. Manasseh says, his name means, the Lord has allowed me to forget my toil in a strange land. Ephraim means the Lord has doubly blessed me in a strange land. Listen to me. Joshua's name, Jehovah is salvation. Joshua's lineage has prepared him to be of a tribe that understands walking people in to a double blessing. <laughs> because if you look over there in Genesis chapter 41 and 23, uh, Joseph has prophesied that there will be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Joshua is about to walk the people of God into the land of Canaan, where the land is filled with milk and honey. Plenty, plenty. But guess what? It ain't all at their fingertip. They still are going to have to fight some ites. They're going to have to fight some ites if they're going to receive all of God's blessing. So having the spirit of courage doesn't stop you from having to fight sickness and disease. It doesn't stop you from having to fight mental situations. It doesn't stop you from fighting your insecurity and your weakness. Listen, it doesn't stop you from fighting areas that have been a stronghold in your life. But yet God has said, you are going to put your neck on this enemy and it is going to die. Are you listening to me? 
Your father might have died an alcoholic. That don't mean you're going to be one all the rest of your life. Listen, you better understand. What, your, you, listen, your father might have been the negative, most negative person you ever dreamed of. That don't mean you're going to have that same idea, thought process. And you might have come from the greatest family. But God says, I still have designed for you to move farther and deeper into what I have declared concerning my word over you. Lord, have mercy. That light right there working on my nerves. Listen, Genesis, that's Genesis 41, 23. So Ephraim is a tribe that understands the name means, uh, uh, the name of Ephraim, double. Bless you doubly. I will make you double fruitful. Stay with me. Now watch this. Joseph, not Joe, excuse me, Joshua resembles this New Testament Jesus because they're both are about conquest. For everybody coming behind me in teaching as I lead, I don't want to hear about the great feats that we all are aspiring to do to stand on the greatest platforms. Uh -uh -uh. I, wanna, I want you to start off by talking about the feats that you have accomplished and that you're dealing with on a daily basis. I don't want to hear about you being heroic of all the, listen, the Wright brothers did a great thing, but they failed so many times before they won. You got me? I want people to understand that the spirit of courage is not made at the highest point of your success. The spirit of courage is developed when you are going through what you don't want to tell anybody about. I know I'm talking to you right now. Listen, I don't need very many amens because I understand the spirit of courage is saying you've been dealing with being overweight and you know you know what to do. You just have not disciplined yourself to do it. And now it's time to have courage to discipline yourself with your weight. Now it's time to have courage to discipline yourself with your studies. I said I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say it. I love my brother, Dr. Oliver Reed. I support him 100%. He knows it. We talk regularly. Listen, we had a vision casters conference. He stirred our hearts about writing books because he is gifted. We're not going to wait to the next vision casters conference for you to say, how do I write my book again? You got the information. Read and write the book. Read and write the book. Read somebody else's book so you can get prepared to write your own book. We don't want to be going through another year wasting money, time, and energy because we did not develop the courage that it took for us to move deeper into. So here's the other thing. Joshua and Jesus, they resemble conquest. That's where you come up with Luke chapter 4, verse 18, please. They resemble because they bring redemption to history. And they, they bring, my God, inheritance to the future. Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach oh. the gospel to the poor. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Send me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. Preach deliverance to captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. And recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Listen to me. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. The reason that I use this scripture so early is because I want you to understand that there is something that the anointing of God is trying to recover, trying to recover in you, in the body of Christ. Listen, it's trying to recover in the earth some stuff that we have lost. Are you hearing me? Some stuff that we have lost. Sometime about 11 o'clock last night, I was called a friend, and her name is Tarana Johnson. I grew up with her when I was in Rockford, Illinois. And uh, in her, as a prophet of God, she began to declare, Teacher Rebecca, I haven't even shared this with you yet, she began to declare, apostle, God has placed up on you the ability. She didn't know I was even teaching the spirit of courage. In this season, you will recover everything that you lost. You will recover everything you think that you lost. And she started running down our children, even ran to the grandkids, even ran to monies, ran to opportunities. Ran, and, and her words were things that you lost because you did for other people. And I said, oh, my God. And I broke down right there because I don't like to lose opportunity. And I don't like to lose, period. Elder Neal told me the other day, he was studying something. They say, and the great ones don't like to lose. Listen, with this spirit of courage, I need you to understand, there is some stuff that some of us lost and we didn't like it and we have not resolved it. And we've got to resolve it. You remember, courage means to be resolute. You got to resolve it. You're not, if you don't resolve it, you're not going to move on to accomplish it. It just wasn't the time at that moment. 
but it will be the time at another moment. Jesus and Joshua resembles each other by redemption, excuse me, conquest, redemption. Oh my God, inheritance, salvation, true sonship, true sonship. You see Jesus always making reference to the father. And I know that we've heard so much talk about, I'm a son of this one and I'm a son of that one and I'm a son of that one. You know, all I do is listen close. You can tell me you're a son of that one, but if you listen to somebody else more than your more than your father, you already told us what you believe. That ain't you drawing, that ain't me drawing you to me. That's me trying to get you to understand that you're going to become what you eat. You're going to become what you dream. You're going to become, and listen to me, and you don't always see it until you get farther down. <laughs> It's only when the rubber hits the road or when hard times hit, you know what you got, Apostle. You know what you got. All right, listen, I know my time is finishing up, so let me give you these six things. You ready? Courage has six stages. There are six stages, or excuse me, six types of courage. I thought it was interesting because as I was doing my study, one said there are four, and I thought about the four that, you know, the body, soul, the spirit, and, and I thought about, when, no, sorry, when I did my study, one had three types of courage, one had four, but the one I saw best fitting for us is this right here, six types of courage, physical courage. This is the courage that most people must have the bravery bravery to get through something extremely difficult. It could be physical health. It could have been a, a minister Cheryl Carter several years ago was in a bad car wreck with one of our church vans and many on there. She broke her back. Tammy was on that van. Listen, and they all had to recover physical, physical, harmful situations. But they will all tell you that that has not been their greatest struggle. The memory, the memory of that tragedy is what haunts them the most. So guess what? There is a social courage, right? A social courage. And the social courage represents many of you that don't like to stand in front of people and speak. Or many of you that don't want to try something different because you might get embarrassed. This has to do with everything that deals with your emotional ability. So say you're not a speaker and say you're not going to be uh you're not going to be speaking to people. So let's just say you're afraid to try anything because you don't want to be socially eclectic. You don't want to look different from everyone else. Are you following me? This is a social. The other one, intellectual. Intellectual courage. This is where we all, at some point in time, have looked at somebody else's ability to think, somebody else's ability to do something, somebody else's ability to solve problems, to come up with a solution, um, or to... Uh, be in a situation to walk people through something in their mind. And we looked at ourselves and said, I can't do that. So intellectual courage is dealing with how we think, how we're going to arrive at the end of what we desire. That's difficult all within itself because you don't have control over that. That intellectual courage can cause you to fail at something because that may not be what God's design is. Are you ready? Moral courage. Moral courage. You know, morale. We've all faced this. Where you're at that place in your life, you know you shouldn't do something, but you're tempted with it. The Holy Spirit is saying, don't go there. This is a doorway to lead you into something that you don't need to be moving into. But something in you says, I can handle it, and you jump out and do it, and it's against the will of God, and you found out that you compromise 
your morals, and your values. And it ain't just that you made a mistake, you lost a part of you because your moral and your value is one of the things that makes up. So when you deal with these types of courage, what you're dealing with is the total makeup of man, all right? Spiritual, spiritual. Now, I don't know where you are in your walk with Jesus Christ, but I proclaim, I declare that there is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved than the name of Jesus Christ. You said, oh, you just offended some people in this world. Well, guess what? It's going to take courage for us to stand in a position with the Lord Jesus Christ and not say that everyone that names themselves as God is going to get you into heaven. It's not true. There's only one name given unto man whereby men can be saved. Jehovah is salvation. He is the God, listen to me. He is the son of redemption. Everything about Jesus Christ, everything about Jesus Christ. And I want to make this definitive statement for every minister that joins, is joined, inspiring, gatekeepers of Mississippi, Judah International. If you name Jesus Christ as your personal savior, then you stand on the name and the principles of Jesus Christ. Because let me tell you something, there are people right now that are looking for answers and we cannot give them some nice, fluffy, cute, emotional thing that's not going to sustain them. We've got to give them Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that's going to sustain. I don't want it on my hands that I didn't say I stood for Jesus because I was trying to get a deal. I was trying to be somewhere. Listen, I don't want your deal. I love Lance Wall now. Bonafide spiritual leader does not compromise his walk and his work in Christ. Deals with all different nationalities and different peoples and all different types of religion. Skillfully, it takes a wise man to win a soul. Some of you are going to find yourself in new seats and God's going to see where you compromise. This is where you're going to need the spirit of courage because you're going to feel the Holy Ghost nudging you to say some things you ordinarily would not see. Ordinarily would not see. How many did I give? Five right there. Spiritual. The last one, emotional. Emotional. This is where we learn to have a certain level of maturity. Listen to me. A certain level of maturity within our emotions. A certain level of maturity within our emotions. We're able to discern that which is right and that which is wrong. Or we're able to discern if we should speak or if we should sit quiet. Why is that important? Because a lot of times when we're given the opportunity to be at the table, it's our golden moment. We're going to say, and maybe God is saying, I just want you to listen. Because if you will listen carefully, then I can give you the blueprint of what needs to be said to draw all men unto me. I, I hope you're hearing me. I I'm trying to pull you. You said that you're just laying heavy on religion. You're not talking a lot about business. You're not talking a lot about education, not talking a lot about influencing the, the, the seven mountains. Oh, yes, I am. I'm talking about the premise, the base of all influence. There is one, his name is Jesus Christ. And everything that flows, the Bible says he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. And guess what? Even those that are operating that don't know him, they're operating on a portion <laughs> of his ability to move in their life. Last thing right here i like to give you. In this study, in our exploration of this spirit of courage, I pray that you will gain in this study confidence, fortitude, long suffering, hope of change. In this study, I hope that you will gain assurance, determination, fortitude, long-suffering, hope of change. And I think the other one I have here is confidence. Why? Because we are about to be on display to the world in every area of our lives. And the Holy Spirit has designed for us to show forth the nature of Jesus Christ.
Again, confidence, assurance, determination, fortitude, long suffering, hope of change. I might have missed that confidence at the beginning because I didn't have it in the definition. These are the things that we're hoping that will come forth. You're going to hear some really good teachers coming behind. I've got some special guests that are coming. I've got some of our ones who have been faithful and have been here and always helped me develop this teaching team. And I'm excited about that. But I want you to remember that we're not looking for some heroic feat that's way out here when our lives need to be touched. Some of you need some courage to forgive other people, some courage to forgive yourself. Some cur Listen, are you hearing me? Some courage to win. You said, I ain't never won. I've never won. Well, this is your season to have courage to win. Some of you are needing the courage to deal with surgery that you had and the pain of getting over hip surgery. Here's my last and final thing. Are you ready? You ready? We pray for all of these, all thousands of them at Inspiring. I've got hundreds here. If you want one of these, I'm not going to ask you to send a special offering. If you want to be a covenant partner, we want you to do that. But if you need one of these, I want you to reach out to us. We will get some of these, several of these to you. This is why. Because my challenge to you is to have some courage for someone who needs something other than you. Courage to have something for someone who needs something other than yourself. It's easy to pray for yourself. Lord, I need this. Lord, I want that. But there are some people who need something. And I'm going to tell you something. I believe that as we have prayed and believed God, that it's going to work miracles. Are you hearing me? I'm sending one to Tarana Johnson. I'm sending another one. I'm sending several to EJ, my son, for people that he know that are not well. Are you listening to me? I'm sending some. I gave some last night to some members at Judah International. See, I'm not going to tell you what to do and not do it myself because I believe it's not in the prayer cloth. I believe it's in the courage to look at adversity in its face and say, Lord, I did my part. Would you please do yours? Listen, I'm Apostle Eric Newell. I know my time is finished. But listen, any I know y'all can't ask for questions. You show me this. Ah, listen to this. Elder Neil just sent me Something that says today's today's word is courage. This is by Maxwell Leadership uh, Minute with Maxwell. He teaches today about the word today is courage. Well, listen, thank you, Mr. Maxwell. But I want to hear all you to hear. We are going to be in this whole season in training and teaching. I'm going to come back. I, I want to do a good job laying foundation with this teaching. I hope it was well with you. If it was, clap it up. God bless you, Brother Brian. Listen. Come on, I know our time is over the limit, so let me pray while you blow the shofar. Can we do that? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your divine grace over the trumpeter's call. Go right ahead, sir. Father, we pray right now. Keep the inside of the heart and the mind of the people of God, that you would cause them to have courage, dear God, to step in and to become and to do what you have so designed. Father, I pray now that whatever event in their life, whatever certain in, in, in their emotional realm, in their spiritual realm, Father, in their uh, intellectual realm, may you press us, dear God, in this spirit of fortitude, firmness, strength, to be strengthened. Blow it, my brother. Go ahead and blow it. You're well. Father, I give you praise right now that we're about to see great exploits. They that know their God are going to do exploits. The people of God are going to do exploits on the behalf of others. Now, power of the Spirit of the living God, send your power to us. Send your power to us. Erupt out of us to deal with the bullies. Spiritual bullies! Spiritual bullies! Bullies! Children that are bullies. Husbands that are bullies. Wives that are bullies. Singles that are bullies. Blow it, Brian. We, we decree you will not bully the body of Christ. Religious bullies. Oh my. Political bullies. Governmental bullies. Leadership bullies. There will be no bullying of the people of God. We're not going to be worried every day. Blow it for me. There'll be no worrying every day. Are we going to have enough food? Are we going to have enough water? Are we? 
What about the birds of the air? They neither toil in the name of Jesus. We decree by the spirit of God. All anxiety, anxiety. We call you <laughs> null and void. Anxiety. You have no authority whatsoever. None whatsoever over the life of the believer. None whatsoever. And Father, for those people that are in the world that cannot overcome anxiety, put us in their space. I've just been so nervous. I don't like big crowds. I don't like small crowds. I, 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 I don't, I don't want to come out of my house. Those that are afraid even now still after post-pandemic situation that are afraid to come out of their homes. Holy Spirit of God, bring them forth. You did not call us to have a spirit of fear. And Father, we pray by your divine spirit that they will launch out and live and grow and move in your spirit. We love you so much. To the intercessors, thank you. To the intercessors, thank you so much for allowing me to have this time. I bless you. Come before us. Listen, you want to be a covenant partner, reach out. Just put it right there in the chat. We'll call you. Covenant partners, you do three things as a covenant partner. We want you to be hands on deck. We come into your city. We want you to be able to help us do whatever it is. Set up, work with resourceful people. Number two, we want you to pray for us always. Always, I need you to pray for Eric and Rebecca Newble. Always. There are attacks that happen to us. We never even say a word. There are things that go on with our families. We just, you know, we just move like many of you. And praise God for the people that are close that, that do know. But if you don't know, listen, I want you to know th there are things that the enemy would love to sabotage. He would love to sabotage, get an advantage over the ministry, get an advantage over us as people. We need those prayers. And thirdly, we want you to sow financial seed. You hear me? Sow financial seed. We travel from city to city, from state to state. We want you to sow financial. Make that covenant. Make that agreement. Three things. We want you to all hands on deck. Serve with us. We want you to pray for us. And we want you to sow to us by the Spirit of God. We are good ground. I will guarantee you that it will be used well. We love you. This is our time. Many, many blessings. If you like any CDs, let us know. Elder Neil will get you taken care of by sending the link to you. All right. Brother Brian, I'm going to let it go. You go, baby.